Kerwin, James, good to see you. Uh, obviously not the outcome of the season that, that anyone wanted. In terms of talking about kind of how, how that happened, and obviously the, the obvious answer is that they weren't good enough, the team wasn't good enough over the course of the season, but one of the key points has been the criticisms has been the recruitment this season. And I think even John said on Saturday, didn't he, that potentially this squad w was weaker than last season. You, you were always at a disadvantage, but how much did it affect you? I think I think obviously it's very disappointing where we finished. I think I think the recruitment um, it's not about just I don't think it's just about just about the recruitment um, and then some other factors around. I think I think it was a very very tough window, especially in the summer. The turnaround was 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 very quick, um, so I think it was it was challenging. Um, possibly didn't make it, make decisions in, in in that department as quick as we we. We would, we should have maybe on some players, and we would probably, we probably get. It's hard when when we go into League One because you go into a different player pool, and some some of the players you're looking for have have bigger options maybe, and so they tend they can tend to hold out for. This is what we found both times. They can tend they tend to want to hold out for some of those bigger options to see if they fall into place for them, and and. And then, but but we're also we are a good option for them, um, you know, it, with in their group of options. So so it ends up that sometimes you wait a little bit too long for that player and miss out on another one. So I think we 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 it wasn't just necessarily the players, but we didn't necessarily recruit to the to the style of play that that we were that that, that Keith was looking to play. We didn't get the key figures right in that. In terms of uh, possibly a target man and 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 you know strength at the back and and you you know you look at it and and um, you know the, the, the look at the three centre halves for example Charlie going which was 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 get, was going to happen you know you know Charlie got his opportunity um, Scotty went back uh, and was going to play in the championship till he got injured and then you know Keith made a decision on Jordan um, and we had three very solid centre backs. Um, and would have been good in, in, in League One too as well. But because you do, you do have to utilise the low market with Scotty and, and, and Charlie going, we probably didn't replace those sufficiently at the start of the year. I think we made an improvement later with Lloyd coming in. Um, I think, and I think John definitely strengthened us at the back in, in going to a four and et cetera. But we hadn't, you know, we hadn't... And I think at times, I think at times... We were unlucky with injuries. We look, you know, I look back at the Oxford game at the, you know, earlier on in the year, and I think Mac, young Max, got thrown in because he was probably the only recognised centre half at the club who was, who was fit. Um, I think, I think Alan coming in, we definitely saw improvements when Alan came in, um, but then Alan gets injured and 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 it caused an issue. So, and that's that's some of the reasons why we're looking at, you know, we've talked about structure a little bit and we've talked about the recruitment as a on a global uh, in a global way rather than just purely first team recruitment we've looked at it okay how do uh, how, how do i us as a club have a bit more control over that or at least in in the direction of what happens so that's kind of what we're we're looking at now and 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 how we think we can we can adjust it because you know recruitment you know look at the job simon did getting out of league 2 and and the job you know we did when we got out of league 2 the first time you know uh, and, and it was very good, um, but we we do struggle. We tend to struggle when we do go up into League One, and we've got to address that. And maybe that is having a bit more. Well, that is having a bit more structure in place in the first place. Yeah. Just to add to that, I, I think it's important to state that you know we we um, we had a competitive budget. You know, this season it wasn't a bottom four budget, despite despite COVID um, and the, the, the challenging. Uh, backdrop, you know, we had a we had a budget that was uh, above the the bottom four budgets in the division. So, you know, ultimately, when you end up in that bottom four, you have to look and review everything and see where where mistakes have been made or where you know where changes can positive changes can be made going forward. Well, on on that point, Kelvin, obviously James mentioned there it wasn't a, a bottom four budget. Could there have you any regrets over the budget? Could there have been more money put into it, or was that the the sensible option? Oh, Jack, is, is, you can always put more money into it. You know, let's be honest, we played Blackpool and I would say they probably had a two and a half times our budget, you know, 
and and I know what Sunderland's budgets are, and you know they're probably three, four times our budget. Yeah, but but you know it's also a it, it, it's a budget that we stayed up with in you know in League One the year before, um, and and I mean not sorry the year before last the first year we were in we were in League One. Uh, it's a similar budget. It was a similar budget to that, and and whilst you could always say more, but you know in this in in terms of COVID and in terms of that is. Let's be honest. We've we're not going to be going. We're not going to be getting relegated, breaking even. Put it that way. You know, it's not a break even season. That's for sure. So, you know, whether you end up putting a, a million pounds in or two million pounds in, it might seem not much to some people, but it is to others. You know, so you know, so in reality, I don't know if it's a budgetary thing that I some of the regrets that I would have. There's probably some other decisions that I would regret more. That's for sure. Well, away from the budget, and well, you mentioned earlier about how it, when you, as soon as you move into League One, especially this season with some of the clubs in there, you're operating in a whole different player pool in terms of recruitment. Was there too much of a focus on players from lower leagues, mainly League Two, a couple from, from non-league as well, that, that the recruitment staff hoped they saw potential in that could step up to the level and not enough players that had been there and, and done it? Um, I think you could look at that, uh, you know, and, and and you, I think that's a, certainly a, an area that you, you can you can say was maybe a weakness in experience in League One, um, and and you can you know we, we just we we weren't good enough at the level, and I think but again we got you know I do look back and say it was almost it was a three week turnaround four week turnaround to you know get it get it turned around after the playoffs and and I think as well. You know, it's tough to talk, you know, because we, we we have got a game on Sunday. So it's always tough to, you know, talk about necessary players that, you know, you're expecting to perform on Sunday. But, you know, when we, we didn't go up as the top, one of the top three, we didn't go up with the top three squad out of League Two. Um, and, and we kind of crawled, all, you know, not crawled into League One, but we certainly had to fight and scrap and et cetera into League One. So, um, so... And I, and I think with the players that we came up with, we didn't, we certainly didn't add enough to that, you know, in certain, especially in certain areas of the pitch. Um, and, you know, it, we were unlucky, Stevie getting injured, you know, definitely, un, you know, very unlucky in, in terms of that all of a sudden you've only got one goalkeeper. Um, um, Alan getting injured, who'd come in and done really well. Mikel bringing Mikel in and him getting injured, you know, he, he looked a good player. So, you know, and, and all teams have injuries. So it's not just about that. But, you know, I think we tried to, the, the, the team tried to make decisions that would improve us, but they didn't, didn't work out as well as we would have hoped. Uh, and away from the recruitment, that, and, and all of these questions, of course, with a caveat of uh, a massive amount of hindsight. So we'll, we'll take that in, in, into perspective every time. But um, with Keith Curl, is there, are there any thoughts in your head that you could have maybe got rid of him sooner? Do you, do you still stick by the, the timing of the decision to, to get rid of him? Yeah, listen, you always you always go back and look at that. I, I, and, and, and I've talked about that, especially with David and James. But, you know, the reality is... Um, the reality is, I think Keith deserved the opportunity to improve matters um, for what he'd done. He'd, and Keith's time is still, I still see Keith's time as successful at the football club. Um, you know, he took us from where we were. And, and, and I think giving him that window, I just, there was just, it just, it, as I said at the time, it just became very tough with performances. Um, and, 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 and just, if you're not winning games and 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 it's not enjoy an enjoyable watch, it becomes very very difficult. And uh, and I think one thing John did was he he changed. Whilst we, you know, the results didn't turn as 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 much as we would have liked. I think performances definitely did, and 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 the way we were playing. And so I think that's um, one. Of, so yeah, you, you can always say that, but but it's it's. You know, it's it is their hindsight decisions, aren't they? You know, should we have changed it at the start of the season? You know, should we have kept Keith for the rest, the whole of the season? Who knows? We don't, we'll never know. We're not gonna. We're not gonna. Listen, we we're disappointed. We're licking our wounds, but we're looking forward now because it's happened and we've got to deal with it. We're not the type of people who suddenly go, you know, oh, going to feel sorry for ourselves because we're going to go forward and we're going to 
get back up. We've proved we can get out of League Two and we just got to do it again. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to talk about the, the, the structural changes that you've been mentioning in a second. But just to find, I want to kind of find a couple of points on last season. In terms of uh, infrastructure for League One, for the club, and I'm not, not talking about the East Stand or the stadium or anything like that, but things that directly affect performance, like the training facilities. Um, Keith Kerr was training at the stadium a long time. He wasn't happy with, he was vocal on what he wasn't happy with what was going on at Moulton. That had a knock-on effect on the on the pitch at times as well. What was going on there and what are your views on, on that? Well, a lot of it, as we talked about at the time, so much of it was COVID-related. So we have to, you know, we can't forget that. That, 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 that there was a lot of impact on what happened on the training pitch at Moulton because of because of COVID, and it's an area we've addressed. We've we've just <coughs> we've just agreed. I think we've spent about seventy five thousand pounds on improving the pitches at Moulton um, for next season, so that we'll have those pitches ready, and 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 those are the pitches we'll use for training, um, and the, and the and the the stadium will be used uh, on. You know, as it normally or as it should be in terms of, you know, maybe, you know, before a home match or some set piece stuff, maybe. And, and there won't be, we won't be technically training at the ground. And we've, James is working on a, a possible dressing room sort of modular sort of cabin related solution uh, up at Moulton, which, which might not be this, this summer, but we'll probably look for next summer. So improving that is in, is, is, in, is important. I, we didn't go down because because we didn't go down because of injuries. We didn't go down because of you know recruitment. We didn't go down because of um, the pitch wasn't good enough. We didn't go down because of the training ground. You know it was a combination of all those things, and we fundamentally weren't good enough. You know, and we didn't win enough football matches. So so yes, they would have had an impact. It wasn't uh, that wasn't a investment issue. It was a COVID related issue that you know and and we those pitches we couldn't get those pitches ready I, and in terms of the stadium pitch um john brady and keith Kerr have mentioned at times it wasn't ideal um it it wasn't the worst pitch in league one by any stretch we've seen teams who did really well in look at peterborough's pitch for example it looked it looked pretty horrendous but it didn't affect them too much but in in terms of this summer is there any plans to address the the first team pitch well i think with lack of, well i think with less training on it next year it'll be better anyway automatically and you know we'll do our normal. Um, we'll do, um, remedi it was probably probably started already. I'm not sure, James. Is it? You know, it's just our remediation work on the pitch. Um, yeah, as we yeah, would next, normally. Next week that'll start on the stadium pitch as well. Training pitches, as Kelvin said, we've invested in, been been done, been put to bed, and we'll, we'll be ready for the start of pre-season. And the stadium pitch will get done uh, next week. And it, it, as Kelvin said, that that's. Uh, you know, it's a COVID issue. You only got to look across football, and you know, even into the Premier League. I think Leeds and a few other Premier League pitches looked looked, you know, sorry state this season. And again, that's down to the time scales of the, the short window we had last summer as well, and not being able to you know, the the renovation project we will do this summer. We would have done last summer on the stadium pitch, but not having that time to do that um, does have an impact. Looking ahead then and looking forward to next season and kind of seasons beyond, you, you've hinted in, in chats with us, Kelvin, over the last couple of months or so about potential structural changes at the club come this summer. Have you made a decision on those yet? Yeah, we've been we've been talking about it for a while and we've been trying to, been trying to get as many people involved in that conversation as we can uh, in, a, in, a, in, on, in all aspects of the football department. And what we're what we're working towards, or what we're probably in, we're implementing, is a, more of a committee structure around recruitment. Now, that's not a committee that's going to make the decisions necessarily, but it's a committee that that is going to uh, provide more of a an oversight of of, of recruitment uh, across across the whole club. So it'll be it'll be and an accountability. So it'll be a, a a group that meets on a regular basis, and it will involve. Um, it will involve the academy manager. Samo will be involved in that process because there has to be a connection. Uh, I've asked Graham Carr to sit on that panel um, as uh, probably as like an advisory role to the board um, and using his experience. It will involve the manager. It will involve James, Chibi Sec, you know, myself to a degree, and um, and also will be recruiting ahead of recruitment. Um, 
Um, and that's that's the group that's going to kind of it, we needed to probably we've always taken a view that the manager sort of controls the recruitment and and um, and, and works with the the recruit the scouts on the head of recruitment and and does they do that and but we're as a club we're kind of taking that a little bit taking a bit more control over that process and, and ensuring that we do have significant processes in place and and be a bit more data driven uh, in in through that process um looking at the data of players coming in you know even our own players and how performance levels etc so it's not necessarily a a decision making group but somebody a group that can that will that will um, define more about what our playing philosophies are and what type of players we want to bring in um, and then the manager will and obviously that's a, a, a big decision that we've got coming up after you know over the next sort of week or so a couple of weeks but but that the manager will come into that group as well and be a, a big part of that philosophy, a big part of that, but but also buy into what the club, what what we're looking for from a club perspective too. Yeah, a couple of really important points you mentioned there. First one I just want to pick up on is you talked about it's not just, it's a recruitment team, but not just with Samuel involved, not just for the first team, but for the a club as a whole. And you'll be looking at specific characteristics in players. Does, does this mean a kind of implementation of, of a philosophy from? first team down to academy, which uh, would Northampton Town be playing a, a particular style of football that you, you can expect? Uh, I think, I th yes, I think there is. there needs to be a much, uh, a much closer relationship with the academy and, 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 and the first team. And that's part of, and we've seen that definitely with, with John, Sam and Rico coming into that. And we've seen some benefits from that. Um, and we need to take that a little bit further, we think, in terms of, ensuring that that even and, and and even to the extent of like a head of recruitment sitting on our technical board now technical board is is something that exists anyway within our academy structure um but it's now having having the recruitment of the first team recruitment involved in also you know some of the recruitment in the academy and 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 vice versa so there is a a communication there and a style of you know a style of play you know, there was a disconnect. There was a disconnect in, in, in with our academy and our first team, especially in style of play. Um, and and it's something that we, we will use this sort of committee to, to address. Yeah, the smoothing of that transition, I suppose, from, from academy to first team. Because we, we've seen a lot of players come through, uh, a lot of talented players as well, but they haven't maybe had the sustained minutes that you'd hope for and I know people like Scott Pollock have been injured and, and, and Caleb's still young and he's making his way Sean McWilliams has been has been excellent but have they been victims of that disjointed where the, the, they're playing a different style of football when they come into the first team that they might not necessarily be comfortable with uh, I don't I can't I don't think we can say they've been victims of that no I don't I think you know and I don't think it's a it's it, it, I don't think it's, it's necessarily stopped people breaking through um, I just think it will be a better part. It will it'll be better rather than it was significantly broken. It will just be a better, smoother path through. Um, and it's more, a lot of it is about the type of player. Um, that especially, it, it, and it's about building for, you know, it's about building for into League One as well. It's having a stronger group when we do go up. And, 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 and having that in the back of our minds a little bit as well, rather than, you know, because, because the structure, that, the existing structures have been fine to get out, you know, to get out of League Two. We've, been, we've, we've shown that we can do that. And, uh, and it, and, but so much of it comes down to players anyway, and it's not just about structure. It's not just about process. It's about using this group and, and this, this process to, to, to find better players, uh, to identify and, and, and better players so that we can then, develop those and have a successful winning football team um you know and it's it's it, it, it's the type of player and it's the positions that, you know what what player fits into the position and and you know and it's it's even getting down to the sort of discussions and we don't want to go into too much detail but in cyber discussions of what what is a wing are we going to play with wing backs what is a wing back what does that player look like and james touched on it with you know in terms of statistical stuff does that player need to be able to run, you know, and et cetera, et cetera. And, and if you've got a wide player, 
how many you know how many crosses are those, is that player putting into the box and that becomes a bit more it's not it's not so much a case of okay yeah we've been told he's a good player and you know and and you know we watch him he's a good but does he get in you know six seven eight crosses into a box that that type of stuff i'm not you know they they're not they're they're sort of generalized examples but it's that sort of process that we that that, that, that needed to improve I think the main main objective, you know, I think this industry is naturally has a short term focus because we we know we're in a results business, and if you don't get results on a on a Saturday, you know, problems start to hit. So there's always going to be a you know a, a looking at the short term, and um, but I think with this opportunity, and there are, there are more discussions we're having around you know other structures as, as well as the recruitment, but it's all about enabling better decision making and also having a more strategic. Um, and more medium, longer term approach to everything from from recruitment to development of academy players. So that really important year or two when they go from an academy player into the first team, you know, that's that's vital that they're still getting their training minutes, their development, their their game time as well. So it's just having a you know more of an involvement from more people and a more strategic view within a structure that will ultimately, you know, have benefits for the football club in the long run. And one of those, as, as Kelvin mentioned, is to try and stop that yo-yo culture when we do get into League One of, of in a very short space of time, almost having to rebuild the, the squad when we've gone up um, to having a far better structure and strategy behind it. So we're, we're ready and equipped when we make that step again. Yeah, and, and that's an important point. And, and with that in mind, Kelvin, I know it's difficult to say because technically this season actually hasn't finished yet. But but looking ahead to next season, with the changes that you'll put in place and 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 with the players and staff that you'll bring in, is there a certain amount of patient, more patience required next season than it might not be one where you automatically straight away going for promotion out of League One, but almost a time to to settle in, get used to the new structure and used to the new format. Ah uh, no! Listen, listen. We we want to be a winning football club, so it doesn't change that philosophy. That has, still has to be, you know, that still has for the first team especially. It has to be the, the main focus. And we we all know that. I'm not. We're not getting away. We're not getting away from that. Um, so we we will be looking. Um, we will be looking to to get promoted. That's you know that's a that's a goal that we would all have. Um, but we're also we're also realistic in that, in the sense that there, there there might need to be a little bit more patience given. There might need to be, um, if we especially if we 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 do talk about you know if we do look at younger players, if we do look at you know some of our academy players, and, and then they may need a bit of time. But we've got to get the balance right because we still need to win football matches. So it's all well and good. You know, you can't suddenly go, like, we're going to play all our academy players and be bottom of the league because that's no good for anybody. You know, so, and not to say that will happen, but you've got to get the balance, strike the balance of players coming in and, and uh, we just need to be, we need to be a bit better. You know, we, we fell short this year and we need to, whatever we do, we need to be a bit better And when we do go, you know, we know we can compete at the League Two level and, and we, need to, we need to come up and, and be better at the League One level when we do. And just a final one for me um, on the the looking to appoint head of recruitment, um, first team manager, of course, permanent first team manager. Um, when can we expect those to be announced, and how important is it that you get those in as quickly as possible to give you enough as much time as possible? I think that's been a, I think that's been a consideration for us in terms of timings, um, and, and that's very important. And, and John's actually been part of this conversation because you know I've known John a long time. John's been in the club a long time, so we've. We've managed to, to have some conversations already, park in the first team conversation around this structure because I wanted John's input of that. So I didn't want John's input of that as a as a potential first team manager. I wanted John's input of that as his experience through the academy and the first team. So so we've already had that discussion and we've got another discussion slated for for today, um, later on this afternoon. So so we are having those discussions and, and then, and then we'll, you know, we'll, we are going to move that conversation on to, you know, from Sir James, David, Mike, in terms of the first team manager. So I, I think we've been, I think I would hope that in the next week or so, we will be making that, making that decision, if not sooner, you know, it's just, it's just, we, we, it's not something we're going to, we're going to rush. 
and and we wanted to make sure we kind of understood what the structure was. The head of recruitment, with Simon leaving us um, today, we, we you know we want to we'd want to get that position in again. It's not something we're going to rush, but we want to get that position in um, uh, quickly as well. So you know over the next couple of weeks, we'd hope to have both in place. Well, thank, thanks for that, and, and good luck with it all as well. Cheers. Just, just following up on the head of recruitment now, have you spoken to anyone about the role? Have you got anyone in mind? Uh, yeah, yes, y yes and no. Um, uh, I think um, there's been some conversations around it. Uh, well, you know, as, as James touched on, we, you know, we talked about, you know, we also talked director of football and possibly longer term, you know, that's maybe a direction we go in and, and et cetera. So there has been some discussions around that and, um, but now I think we'll focus a bit more on that now that, you know, there is a vacancy and, and I'm sure there'll be quite a bit of interest in that role. You also spoke about um, using data a bit more. Is that, is that, I think that's obviously becoming increasingly common in football. I think more and more clubs are actually appointing sort of specialist data experts. Is that something you've considered at all? Well, we do have, you know, we have a, we have a video analysis. So we, we do use data. It's not like suddenly it's a new thing for the football club. Um, and and it's just probably stepping it up a little bit. Maybe, you know, we have talked about potentially a, a recruitment um, a data specialist that we, 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 when we've talked about it, it's not something I think we would do this summer, but it's definitely something we, we would consider. And it might be, um, you know, utilising our current analyst in, in, with some or more of the recruitment in terms of the, the actual data itself rather than just the video. Okay, thank you for your time.